Hello and welcome to another edition of Bentley Tech EDU. We're going to build on our previous sphere project and make another one that's got a grouping of a lot of spheres all in different colors. You can see I've got an 8x10 at 150 that's long ways. It's currently untitled. Let's get this sphere with all of its attributes copied over to the other new template. All you got to do is select them all by holding shift, right click, duplicate the layers. When you do this window pops open, you want to check the destination as your new untitled document. Obviously you might want to give it a name beforehand, but we'll get to that in just a little bit. While it's still selected, I would highly, highly recommend you name it as a group sphere one. Later, if I needed to, I could always go back and give it a new name. Here is my first sphere. What I can do now is copy it and do a control T, scale with that control T and put the new sphere just kind of over here. What I am gonna do above all is just kind of set the stage with a lot of different spheres of varying sizes. Some of them I might like, some of them I may not like, like this one I think should probably go underneath. It accidentally jumped on the inside. Let's make sure we try that again. You put it underneath. Trust me when I say this will happen to you too. Just got to keep making copies. Control T. I think I like this one fairly large. And I'm going to take it off the stage a little bit. That looks pretty good. Now my original and sphere looks a little bit too big. So let's shrink it down by a lot. And it's at this point where I really start playing games in terms of the way it's actually going to look. I'm not always sure what I want. So we'll call this sphere big. And this one, we'll call it sphere far and uh, our original sphere one we'll just keep it at sphere one and my final one you know let's make this very small let's see what happens if i hit it with a control t make it kind of small like much smaller and just kind of bring it over onto the foreground maybe this will work out for us now i'm not exactly sure if i like this composition i might think about taking sphere one and sphere far and scooting them over just a little bit just to even out and balance that composition. Let's start working on the floor and the background. I'm going to start by throwing my background away and making a new layer. Let's put in a nice green surface, kind of like a pool table maybe, and we'll put that into the background. I'll lower it just a bit. Give it a nice green. I hit Alt Backspace to fill. What I would like to do is give it kind of a spotlight effect. Let's try it. Get a circle. Select a large kind of an elliptical shape. Move it into position. And as you know, if you fill something right now, it fills the inside of the shape. Let's try filling the outside of the shape. As an example, this is how it would work. Control, Shift, and I. Now, if I hit Alt Backspace, you can see clearly that it fills the background. But what we have not done is feathered the shape. So let's select, modify, feather 125. Now I hit Alt Backspace, and it gives me a very interesting look. As you can see, the background is really messed up in terms of the actual background. I'm going to use my magic wand. I click right into the back, go right up. Now what I did is I use the green. I click with the magic wand in its transparent area. I click back up to the black layer and I hit backspace. Let's try it one more time. This time I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to drag this piece right onto the top, scoot down, 
let's give it a nice background. I'm not even going to worry about the overall shape, really, because it's hiding behind the green. So if I was to get rid of the green, you'd see that all these elements are still there. Let's get another new layer, another fairly large circle. I'm going to position it so it looks interesting, but I don't want it to look like a classic vignette. Select, modify, feather. I'll stick with 125. I hit OK, Control Shift I to select the opposite, all backspace to fill, selecting black, and Control D. If I was to wink off the black, you could see that hiding underneath it is another shape. So, what I am going to do is do a Control T. I don't think I like the way that this shape looks. So what I am going to do is I'll hold shift a little bit. I'm going to pull this right off stage and lower this down just a hair. What I'm trying to do is create kind of a movement across the shape. If I feel like there's too much color right here, just do a control T and shift to change that shape just a little bit. And now it still feels like there's light over here and it's still working. Let's pull this over just a bit. And there you go. Okay, lots of pink spheres. Let's add color, the far sphere. Let's give it a try. Now what I do is I go to my saturation and using the properties window, I'm gonna slide the sphere over, but oh, it's changing the background. What does this mean? Well, you must click this little lock the layer down symbol. It's a piece of paper with a direct arrow. And you can see it, it puts a little arrow locking it directly to the, in this case, it's a folder that's right below. What I want to do is make it kind of glow against that nice blue background. All right, what I'm going to do is take the big ball, the big sphere, and again, get another saturation, drop it on. As, it, as always, if I do not press this, everything changes. I don't want that. So I must press the lock it down button. And when I'm looking at work, I'm always going to look, hey, did you adjust the color appropriately? Things like that. Red's not bad. I'll stick with the red sphere. And finally, the littlest sphere. There it is. Let's give it another saturation. Honestly, you guys, I just kind of, and I'm going to lock it down immediately. I just kind of play with it. And as I slide the slider, if I see something I like, I stop like right there. I like it blue. I got all my basic colors. The red sphere, I would probably make a little darker. I'm okay with the pink. If I was to do anything at this stage, I would probably want to adjust the location and the size of the spheres just enough to really give it the kind of a pop that I'm looking for. Maintaining kind of like relationships of scale and size and color. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I've been able to successfully create four spheres out of one with different colors, and it looks pretty cool. That's it. I'm out of here. James Bentley for Bentley Tech EDU. Have a great day.